Hello everyone. So for this video, we'll be taking a little bit more in-depth dive into the barrel AX and my use, personal use case scenario and recommendations uh, as far as I use it, and recommended scenarios. So I currently have two of the barrel AX routers. The first one serves as a, my primary IoT network at home, uh, which basically supports all my dumb devices, my smart plugs, uh, smart plug smart bulbs over here, the smart LED strips around the house, my thermostats, uh, my uh, basically temperature sensors all around the house that I have, plant lights, uh, anything that basically I don't want on my primary network. I would put it on there. It has its own set of uh, ad card policies that prevent data collection and just keeping my network kind of clean so my Personal devices go on my primary network. The IoT device, which is the the, the first barrel AX that I have, holds on everything else that I don't fully trust, and has its own set of firewall rules, which I had to you know finagle with it quite a lot to make sure I could minimize as much as data collection as possible. I know that's impossible these days. I know it's impossible to even state that, given the fact that I use smart plugs and smart devices. That I I, I even believe this is the case, but. I try to minimize as much amount of data being collected off of me. And the best best practice I saw was having a secondary IoT network in place that did so. Uh, the primary network that I have is, is actually another GL.inet router that I have. Uh, it's called Flint. I purchased it in 2021, I believe, uh, pre-ordered it actually, and it came in. I have have been nothing but happy since then and th that is one of the main reasons why I decided to go for these travel routers again. So the first one serves as my IoT network. This is the secondary one which is my primary uh, at this point my test bench of work that I play around with, I mess around with, I host things on and it stays in this little travel bag that I purchased off of Amazon as well. I'll post a link for the of this in the description as well. It holds everything adequately. Uh, this router, the Barrel AX, compared to the Slate AX, is my primary go-to when I'm traveling internationally as well. Just because, included in the box, it came with all the world travel adapters. That is one thing I found a little bit odd about the Slate AX. It did not come with these travel adapters, yet it's a portable travel router. So, it just didn't make sense, didn't make that much of a sense. Like, I, why do I have to go buy these adapters if it's already included in a different model, such as this barrel AX? And uh, it all fits in here in this little neat, nice packaging. I'll just go ahead and open it, and you guys can take a look at it. So, as you can see, come and I keep the original Ethernet cable over there, and this is the power adapter, which is rated at five volts at two or three amps. 15 watts max and it, it comes with the the US UK and the Europe version of the adapters that just could snap into the the, the two pins over here they rotate into sp place and basically you could use this router anywhere globally on the other side is the actual travel router itself so it sits, fits in this a little nice sleeve and as it comes out, you can see it's a very nice packaging. So this is where I will zonk it. Also give it a little positive thing as well. The fact that it it doesn't have the third Ethernet port. But it does have a 2.5 gigahertz, 2.5 gig VAN port, I'm sorry. So that's actually very cool. I have never not been able to test this. I don't know anybody that actually has 2.5 gig LAN connection that I could connect this on and test out the functionality because the Wi-Fi, the wireless card in here does support 2400 megabits per second, the 5 gigahertz number that is. So that's actually very cool bandwidth wise that it's here. Uh, this router also doesn't have a micro SD card. If you notice, this Lady X does have it. Even my old AR750S had a micro SD card, which was only 128 gig, but it was still present. This one doesn't have one at all. So that's a little different difference that I noticed and you know, that was also pointed out to me by some of you viewers in my comments in the previous videos. But yeah, overall it's much more smaller package than the Slate AX, which makes it more portable. It is slightly lighter as well. Uh, in my case, as you can see, I have a little Velcro piece over here at the bottom that I use at work to basically stick it against 
uh, areas that I primarily use as in my lab environment. As you can see, very nice, very portable. And with the included power adapters, a global travel router. I'm going to go ahead and connect this to this battery unit that I have, power station that I have. So the power station's actually uh, 300 watts max on the AC adapter, 60 watts max on the PD port, and 5 volts to 2.4 amps of the USB ports over here, as you can see. So I'm going to simply power this unit on, connect to the AC adapters first. That you can look at the power specs on it, usage on it, idle, power usage. Then we'll connect a few devices to that to this router as well to replicate some out of a network draw. I'm not going to connect the USB device to it to basically show like how much power a hard drive, uh, like a hard drive uses. And uh, I'll be very honest with you. At a given time, I have had about work. Uh, like 10 to 12 devices connected to it. I have never seen this router go up beyond uh, 10 watts of power usage given that I had nothing connected to the USB port over here or the LAN port. So that was actually pretty cool to see that even though the power supply does support 15 watts, up to up to 15 watts of max power, I, it, it never went over 10 watts in real time, in, in, in usage, in my case scenario that is. Uh, I could also affirm the same thing when it comes to the IoT network barrel AX device that I use at home. That has about 30 plus devices, but they're all smart plugs, like the smart plugs, smart devices. They don't really use heavy bandwidth. And for those devices, again, 10 watts is the max I have seen being drawn from the original factory power adapter. And no reboots, no shuttering, no crashing, none of the issues at all whatsoever. So I'm going to go up, go ahead and power that on. Then I'm go, we're going to connect the power adapter to the USB-C port that actually has a rating of 5 volts to 3 amps. So this is the original power adapter that's included in the box being connected to it. I'm going to leave this unit over here so you can see once it powers on, the numeric values will climb over here once it's fully powered on. And the LED lights steady on over here. I am going to basically connect two devices to it. One device would be a Galaxy S8, which is not a Wi-Fi 6 device, but it's the current available test device that I have available at home. The second device would be a gaming laptop. It's a Asus gaming laptop and uh, it has a Wi-Fi 6 card, so I'm going to connect that as well. Then I'll do two uh, like speed tests on both devices, separately on each device. You should look at the bandwidth usage. This travel router is about 20 to 25 feet away from my main home router, which is the Flint from, Bear, from GL.inet. And that is a Wi-Fi 6 router. So it's connected over Wi-Fi 6 router over the 5 gigahertz network right now. And uh, the bandwidth that I have for the home router is 300 by 300 Verizon Fios fiber. Uh, in use case scenario, that bandwidth fluctuates 10% up and down. In most cases for Verizon, it has been 10% or 300 or plus 10% uh, in my personal case. So we'll wait for the device to power on. I also made a video for the Slate AX doing the same test as you can see. Right now the router is in standby mode or, or idle mode. Nothing's connected to it. The Slate AX kept going up to 4 to 5 watts. This is staying steady at 3 watts. So slightly lower power requirements. Uh, the Slate AX requires a uh, well, comes with a 5 volts of 4 amps, 20 watt power supply. This one comes with a 5 volt at 3 amps, 15 watt power supply. So that's a pretty standard as you can see with options available. Let me just connect devices to it, do a speed test and see how much bandwidth we can use. So we have two devices connected to it. We have this Galaxy S8 device, like I was previously mentioned, connected to it. I'm going to run a speed test on this device and this device alone right now.
So like I mentioned earlier, the trial router is about 20 to 25 feet away. Uh, so you can see the performance 199 by 209 on a 300 gig network, 300 megabit per second network. Uh, I did a comparison video with the same same distance from the main router uh, with the Slade AX and it actually had faster speeds and that is one of the reasons why I would recommend the Slade AX. It may, it may not be as portable, may have higher power requirements, but those power requirements do have a proper function. Uh, slightly better results. There's nothing on my network that's drawing uh, power or drawing bandwidth uh, that could produce the performance right now. So uh, the only thing that's probably connected to my network at this point are just smart devices that are just in standby mode most of the time. Okay, so run the power speed test again. Let's look at the power. The power goes up again and I will do the same thing on the desktop side as well. So I have now have two devices connected doing speed tests at the same time. And as you can see, the power went up to five watts, going back to four. Let's do this one more time. So I do want to point out this S8 is not a Wi-Fi 6 device. As you clearly see on top, it is not. Uh, the gaming laptop that had it connected over here does have a Wi-Fi 6 card. And I am going to give you some, I'm running a speed test on it. I'm not going to display that on the screen, but I can give you the results. So I'll we'll read out the numeric values to it once it's completed. And that does indeed pull the same amount of values as the Slate AX does. So slightly better performance for Slate AX when you, com uh, when you connect uh, older devices to it when it comes to network bandwidth, but identical performance when it comes to newer devices uh, that have a Wi-Fi 6 card in them. So my desktop is, my gaming laptop is pulling 300 by 344 pretty much the same numeric values as the Slate AX. And as you can see, three watts draw only stand uh, idle time uh, with load on it, with two devices connecting, running speed test at the same time, five watts uh, with about eight, like 10 to 12 devices connected, I can push it as far as 10 watts. I haven't actually hit 15 watts yet on it. Uh, the Slate AX, uh, same thing. I have not hit 15 watts. It's been around 13, 14 watts. In the most use kit scenarios, I've used it for traveling purposes. And uh, it has been fine. I am going to disconnect the AC adapter now. Connect, to, connect this, connect the USB-C cable to the PD charging port. And then do a test over that to see what the numbers are at that point. So the cool thing about this cable is actually has it's a hundred watt rated cable and has a little L C D screen, a LED screen on it, sorry, not L C D and actually shows the numeric watts being drawn over here as well. So right now it's supplying one watt to the router, as you can see, same case over here as well. So it's very accurate when it comes to that point. And they may, both the power station and the cable may have different refresh rates. So you may see data slightly off, but once things stabilize, the numbers are pretty much identical. That's usually how I look at things over here. Like as you can see, it's two watts, three watts. So yeah, this is actually updating more frequently compared to the power station, as you can see. 
So right now, the device again is booting up. And we'll do the same test again. Once it's fully up and running. While that's happening, let's go over some of the specs. So this Barrel AX router has a MT7981 dual core processor with DDR4512 megabyte of memory and uh, 256 megabyte of flash for installing packages, plugins, and such. Uh, it, the 2.4 gigahertz network has a max speed of 574 megabits per second. The 5 gigahertz network has a max speed of 2402 to 2402 Mbps. Uh, no micro SD card slot. It does have one gigabit LAN port and a 2.5 gigabit per second RAN port. Uh, power consumption according to GL.inet is under 8 watts. I have, like I said, I've been able to push it as far as 10 watts, but that is also, again, without nothing connected to the power port. I just had a bunch of devices connected on it in my lab environment at work, and I was just downloading a bunch of data over it, and I have better, more bigger bandwidth at work, and I could hit as far as 10 watts usage on it. The secondary device, or the the secondary device that I have at home that I support my IoT devices again has 30 plus devices connected to it and I, in a regular normal usage scenario I see about 4 to 5 watt usage on there when I connect other devices to it do a speed test uh, using up all the available bandwidth then I could hit as far as 10 watts but usually 4 to 5 watts is idle with 30 plus devices connected on that router and device is fully up and up and running as well as you can see lights steady on three watts is idle we're going to put the phone back on the same network again and same thing with our PC as well and we are again going to do speed tests So two devices running speed tests at the same time. Let's see how, what the power usage is. Four watts, five watts, three. Same numeric values. So idle three watts, uh, usage four to five watts. Uh, the most I would say is 8 to 10 watts I have seen use which is which makes it pretty adequate you could possibly use this router with the you know your own power adapters given they are they have the proper certifications on them and they are up to 3 amps 5 volt, five volts to 3 amps I would recommend using that I would not recommend you going for like a 1.4 amps or 2 amp 5 volt power brick with it I uh, just don't think you want to be bothered by the fact that that may cause, uh, you know, some interruptions, random crashes, freezing up of the UI, actual router just acting abnormally, re you know, like reduced Wi-Fi range, connectivity issues. It will just create a whole can of work, I and mean, you'll be spending a vacation troubleshooting on issues. So I would not recommend anything under 3 amps for this device just to be safe. You get it with 2.4 amps, I can connect it to 2.4 amps, and just it just works perfectly fine. But just to prevent any headache, I would rather have that overhead in space in place just to just be safe. Thanks again for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them.